The Sign Painter by Alan Say. For Imi Oshima. That morning, only one passenger got off the early bus. He seemed quite young, rubbing his eyes as though trying to shake off sleep or find out where he was. He looked down the empty street with a dark storefront on both sides and gave a sigh. Not even a coffee shop was open. Then he turned the other way where the bus had gone and saw a lighted window two blocks away. He crossed the street. When he came to it, he saw that it was a sign shop. And through the window, he could see a man working inside. He hesitated, then straightened and tapped the glass. The man looked up, stared for a moment, and beckoned with a nod. The young man walked in. Are you lost, son? The man asked. Yes, I mean, no, I need a job. The young man stammered, looking not much more than a boy. Tell me, what do you do? I can paint. Uh, an artist. Are you good at faces? I think so. Can you paint them big? Yes. All right, I'm interested. The man put down his brush and said, come with me. They drove to a vacant lot where the blank billboard had been set up. This is your model, the man said, showing the boy a picture of a woman. I want her on the right, as big as you can make her. The boy worked quickly. He outlined a face taller than himself, and then he began to paint. At lunchtime, the man said, you seem to know what you're doing. In the late afternoon, a large white car drove up as a sign painter walked towards it. The back window rolled down. He spoke with someone inside. After a while, an envelope was handed to him, and the car drove away. He was flushed when he said to the boy, How would you like to work on a dozen billboards? They started out early the following morning. We'll be working in the desert, the man said. I like painting landscapes, the boy said. You're painting a woman just the way the layout shows. Goes with one word, arrow star. That's it. What's an arrow star? I didn't ask, replied the man. By mid-afternoon, they were driving into the desert. Later that day, they came to the first job site. Now there's the canvas for you, the man said. It'll be like painting a mural, the boy said. But who's going to see it way out here? That's not our problem, the man said. They spent three days on the first board and moved on to the next. They set up a tent and cooked their beans over fire. How does it feel to be a wage earner? The man asked. I'm a painter, the boy replied. We all have dreams. What made you want to paint? It's what I love. But you found out you had to make a living. Yes. We'll make a good team. You won't go hungry. The boy did not answer. As time went on, they spoke less, as if their voices would disturb the silence around them. Only the landscape changed. Then one day, the boy said, How many more? Are you tired? The man asked. I'm not tired. What's bothering you then? 
I keep wondering, who know the difference if I put a mountain in the background or even just a cloud? Son, when someone pays you to paint a woman, will you give him a landscape? The boy looked away. They went on setting up and breaking down the tents, moving on to yet another blank signboard. So the morning when the man announced, one more to go, the boy said, one more what? The man laughed, but a wind came up and they were caught in a raging dust storm. They rolled up the windows and spent the night sitting up in the truck. Sometime before dawn, the wind died. The man turned the ignition. As the engine sputtered to life, they sighed with relief. But when the last billboard came into sight, they rubbed their blurry eyes. Only the skeleton of it was left standing. The panel had been blown away and were nowhere to be seen. I don't know if we can fix this, he grumbled. The boy looked off towards the horizon. Watch out, the boy shouted. The man leaped backward. The swerving car barely missed him. It's the Aerostar woman, the boy cried. What is she doing out here? She came from those towers. Couldn't be an oil well. Let's have a look. Approaching the looming towers, the man said, That must be an arrow star. What can it be? the boy asked. The man stepped hard on the brakes. It's a roller coaster. They stared at in silence. Then the boy pointed at a smaller mesa, which had a house on the top. But why out here? he asked. I wonder, the man said. Maybe that road will lead to the answer. They drove on staring in amazement at the sight before them. An immense curtain hung in the sky and under that a cluster of houses nested on a rock as if floating on a cloud. From there, a long ramp sloped down to the desert floor. The man eased the truck onto the ramp. They pulled into a lot at the top and got out. The boy followed the man into the narrow street. They peered into the gaping window of an empty house with not a single piece of furniture inside. The only sound came from their footsteps. Suddenly they stopped. Someone was talking nearby. The man put his finger on his lips and the two followed the voice to the open archway. Imagine it, all lit up at night. A man in a white suit was talking on the telephone. Had the name for years before any of the building was done. The whole thing was riding on the highway coming through who knows but we'll advertise billboards we can only hope no she left couldn't wait she said the sign painter pulled the boy away from the archway they coasted down the ramp neither said a word until the arrow star was behind them will he succeed the man asked. I hope so, the boy answered. Goes to show you that dreams come in all sizes, but we're done for now. How do you feel about working with me? The boy said nothing. 
Look, there's the cloud you wanted to paint. Even has the frame around it. The boy turned to look. There it goes, just passing by, like you and me. And the builder of the Aerostar. Good luck to him. The next day, before sunset, they were back in the shop. It was late when the boy said goodbye to the sign painter. And as the last bus came around the corner, he said softly to the empty streets, just passing by. The end.